Well, hello there. My name is Michael Exile. If you don't know who I am, it's probably because I don't really make YouTube videos. And if you know who I am, you probably found me on my Twitch over at twitch.tv forward slash Michael Exile. I stream over there for about five to six hours every day of the week when I feel up to it. So if you want to go check that out, I'll have all the links to my socials and my Twitch in the description. But uh, I'll give a better introduction at the end of the video. Let me explain why I'm here. So I am a survivor man for the most part. I have about 2,600 hours in this game. So... It's safe to say I'm not, you know, a killer enthusiast, but I feel that I might have found something with this latest killer, the Deathslinger. And I felt very inspired as a person who's a fan of Cowboys, and I love Overwatch, I love FPS games. So this is, feels like right up my alley, and I might have found a little build, a little trick to kind of remedy some of his shortcomings that people may feel when they play him. So, yeah, let's just get into that build that I have in mind. This is a bit of a disclaimer. I just made this build for fun. I'm not looking to preach from the mountaintops that this is the best build for the Deathslinger. I just had a lot of fun playing with it. Maybe unrelenting isn't as good as I think it is, but I had a lot of fun maneuvering around corners with it. It felt like it made a difference, but I'm no killer main. I'm no killer pro. I don't know the statistics or the, the, the numbers and stuff. You know what I mean? So I'm just using this build for fun. It may not be for you if you're looking for an easy 4K or just something that's really sweaty or something that's makes them super OP. It's just a build that I had fun with. So just keep that in mind when I'm explaining this build. At the end of the day, I'm no killer main. I'm just looking to have fun. So yeah, let's get to the whole explanation. If you know the shortcomings of Huntress, you're going to know the shortcomings of the Deathslinger. This is what the build is meant to remedy. I'm talking about like structures like walls, pallets, windows, stuff like that. And then for the Deathslinger, he has a reload animation. When his chain breaks, he gets stunned. There's a missed attack cooldown. And uh, there's a lot of things I get to take into consideration when playing this killer. He might have a tough time with maps with tight corners, uh, dense buildings with a lot of pallets and windows, stuff like that. So that's what this build is meant to remedy. And this is the build that I'm running. So the build that I prefer here is uh, Unrelenting, Save the Best for Last, Corrupt Intervention, and Whispers. Corrupt Intervention and Whispers aren't really the meat of the build or of what I'm trying to explain here. But I prefer those because I run them on Huntress and I feel he plays pretty closely to Huntress. So uh, that's why I run them. If you want to run something else, go for it. The two perks that I feel are a necessity though are Unrelenting and Save the Best for Last. If you uh, play any M1 killers at all, Save the Best for Last is a necessity it feels like. It makes it a lot easier to play an M1 killer because it helps you catch people before they vault windows or pallets and such. And it gets you that fast down. So with the Deathslinger, you're not really going to get past M1-ing. He's not like Huntress where you can just throw a projectile and down them and avoid M1-ing the whole game or Billy. So uh, that's why Save the Best for Last is good for him. It's a no-brainer. Um, Unrelenting decreases the cooldown of a missed basic attack. It's the complete opposite of Save the Best for Last. A lot of people consider Unrelenting a noob perk because why are you missing your basic attacks, forehead? But that's not what this perk is for on this killer in particular. So just to explain why I say that is because the Deathslinger will get his chain broken a lot. If he's on a map with a lot of walls, a lot of windows, a lot of pallets, chances are the survivor is going to get to the other side before that chain hits. And then they're going to be able to break the chain without you being able to hit them. So once that chain breaks, you're going to be stunned. And that stun feels like it takes an eternity. To avoid that stun, you can just M1. And... Uh, with unrelenting, you decrease the cooldown of that missed attack because you're not going to hit them if you M1 to cancel the chain. Because if you're doing that in the first place, chances are you don't want to get stunned, right? Because you know you're not going to get them. That's why unrelenting is so good. And uh, usually you can use this to kind of get around an obstacle. Like if you swing and maneuver around the obstacle, like with your movement keys, you are going to be able to close some distance between you and that survivor as opposed to the stun that just makes you stand on your feet for a little bit and let them gain some distance on you. Which is why I feel like this unrelenting really shines on this killer. But the one thing that you have to keep in mind is if the survivor is not injured and they're going to break the chain and you don't think you can hit them, just let the chain break because it puts them into the deep wound state. And uh, if you break the chain yourself with the M1, like I said, you're not going to injure them and they're still going to be full health. So just keep that in mind. Don't just cancel the chain every time. You have to injure them first. If they're injured and they're going to break the chain, that's when you want to cancel it. So that's why I have the build that I have. 
And then there's Warden's Keys and Tin Oil Can for my add-ons. The Warden's Keys is just the reload speed add-on. I prefer the faster reload speed. I feel like the faster you can reload, the faster you can like shoot them again. Because once you reel them in and hit them, they get a sprint burst. So if you can reload that faster and shoot them again and catch them before they get behind an obstacle, the reload speed really comes in handy. But if you miss shots, for example, that's where Tin Oil Can comes into a effect. So I run Tin Oil Can personally because of the dedicated servers. We know that latency exists. It's not really good right now. If you you miss shots that you sh feel like you shouldn't have missed and you hit shots that you feel that shouldn't have hit. And that's kind of a bummer sometimes to deal with, especially with a projectile killer. Like Huntress is notorious for stuff like that. And I feel like the Deathslinger is no different. So that's why the Tin Oil Can is here. It just decreases the cooldown of a missed shot. And the faster you can recover from that, the faster you can shoot again. Same thing for like Warden's Keys, like I said. So that's the build I'm running. Uh... You might see on the gameplay that I'm showing on the screen that I have uh, kind of used my uh, unrelenting a bit to get around obstacles. Sometimes it's not really successful, but you can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing. This uh, disclaimer for the Kill Your Friends gameplay, I did ask them to not gen rush too hard or just hide the whole game, but they are playing whatever builds they want to play. I didn't ask them to go easy on me. I put myself on a difficult map like Larry's and the game just to kind of showcase the build a little better. But uh, yeah, I do realize that the perks that I chose probably aren't the best perks. Maybe there's something you would rather run over the perks I chose. Terror Radius build or a game slowing build, whatever the case may be. Overall, I just have a lot more fun playing with this build. I feel I can get cheeky hits that I wouldn't otherwise be able to. Kind of like when you get a cross map as Huntress, I get the same satisfaction from this killer. And he's just very fun to play. And I felt that the build that I chose kind of remedies some of the things that feel off about him right now in the test build. It's important to keep in mind that this is the test build still, so this build can become obsolete by the time he's released. So maybe they'll change his stun after his chain breaks, maybe they'll buff him a little bit, bring him a little bit above mid-tier. But overall, he's a lot of fun to play, a lot of fun to play against. I'm really excited for the future, DVD and this DLC, and I hope I can make more videos like this in the future and feel inspired to make more videos. But if that doesn't happen, you can catch me over at twitch.tv forward slash Michael Exile. You can join my community there, the Small Game Society. We have a lot of discussions about the game and the new changes they make and the updates and the DLCs, all that stuff, and just about life in general. So if you want to go join the conversation, I'll leave links in the description for my Twitch and my Twitter and my Discord. If you want to join my Discord as well, I put stream updates there. And we just have cool conversations there as well while I'm off stream and Twitter for just stream updates and the occasional meme retweets. So if you're into that, go follow me there. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you have a good day, night, whatever time it is for you as you're watching this. And I hope to see you in another video, hopefully, or in my streams. But yeah, I'll see you later.